Hey, it's Empress Rose and welcome to our collective reading. So we're just getting started here with the good old Oracle mystical moments. We got a flipped card here. Anything else? Yes. Okay. So we're going to take this one first. Keys on trees. You're in a bit of a difficult spot here. Um, feeling a little bit stuck, a little bit trapped. There is going to be an answer that you, you, it just takes some work. And this one always talks about like, you didn't get here on purpose. You didn't do anything. This looks like um, a trick or one of those twists of fate or something like that. Like an elephant doesn't really willingly go up into a tower. So <clears throat> It does make me think that there is some sort of crisis, some sort of tower moment going on here, and you're sort of um, kind of stuck in it and not seeing a way out. Um, and this is to affirm that the way out is not easy. Sometimes when we are stuck somewhere or in a situation, it seems like, well, you know, maybe maybe there's just something I'm not seeing. There's just a little trick. And it's true. There, This is like, yeah, there is a little key here. There's something that is going to work. There's something that's going to release you from the situation. But it's also saying like, it's not simple. It's not like, you know, kindergarten. It's not elementary. It's not anything like that where you're just not seeing the obvious answer that's right in front of your face. This is like, yeah, this is tricky. And I, so the, for one, I really like this card for that reason is because keys on trees. So this elephant is going to have to go through a couple different keys before it finds the right one. It's not labeled that this is the key. This is the trick. This is how you, you get out of this situation. So the key is not labeled here. Um, and so it just, just is going to take, be a process of elimination. Um, yeah, I think a process of elimination sounds about right. Um, or uh, just trying to experiment with some things and, and move pretty quickly through that. Don't be like, oh, this key, it's not working. Um, maybe if I just turn it this way or turn it that way. It's like, yeah, there's a couple different options, a lot of different keys here. So just kind of keep it moving um, through sort of solutions. Um, and then also being more focused on solutions rather than the problem. Like you could really sit here and be sort of, I want to say in an eight of swords situation where like you're just trapped in your mind. Um, you're not even trying anything. You're not doing anything. You're not experimenting with solutions. So this is being very solution oriented rather than problem oriented. Like we have to look at the problem and have to sort of define it. And then once that's defined, we quickly move our mind into, um, okay, let's solve it. Let's use our mind for what it's meant for, not obsessing over things, but coming up with solutions and problem solving. Um, so being more in the solving aspect of the problem solving rather than the, uh, right? Because this elephant could easily just sit here and die in this turret or this cage. Like, this sucks, um, but it's got to keep moving and motivating and and um and working through possible solutions so it does actually like it reminds me of the very nature of a key which is like hitting a couple different like things in the lock like the just kind of the right physical combination in the lock in order to open it and maybe some other key fits in the lock but it doesn't have the right combination so there's a some sort of right combination or something um and in yeah, you're like a safe cracker um, and you're you're cracking open the safe and it's just trying to find the right combination. So um, and it's there. It'll it's it exists. The right combination exists. Um, yeah, it's a it's both a reassuring card of like, yeah, we see where you're at. This is not easy. And also um, and, and there is a solution. There is a way forward. There's a way forward here. And I also like this card too, because uh, there's a great perspective. This elephant, well, it's been up here. If it's paying any attention at all, it has gotten a really good perspective on things. Um, it knows now where maybe even a better watering hole is. It knows where um, different cliffs are and different valleys and maybe has seen some paths forward. It's gotten a bird's eye view, which the elephant normally wouldn't have. And since elephants have notoriously great memory, this elephant is going to remember the landscape here. 
very well. So lessons, they are learning quite a bit. You are learning quite a bit while you're up here about maybe even things that are unrelated to the exact situation. Treasured memory, speaking of memory, um, I almost want to say that you're creating a treasured memory here, that this is something that like, right, we were just talking about how you're going to remember this situation for a very long time. And you're going to remember maybe some even unrelated things um, that that aren't necessarily related to the problem solving itself, but just what you've gained from the situation is going to be really important. I think there's also something I think last week we were also talking about, you know, Wordsworth's was it Wordsworth's um, daffodil poem where he talks about remembering this beautiful field, remembering these daffodils um, when he's like homesick in his bed. So I think that there's something to that too. It's a very treasured memory. You're not letting it go. It might have been of a, of a pretty wild time, some deep passion. You're, it's not one that you're letting go. Uh, there's, there's something sustaining here. It's almost like while you're in the situation, you're remembering freedom. You're remembering when you weren't in the situation and you can get there again. Uh, it won't be exactly the same. Of course, it'll be totally different, but the, the memory that you will have made or the, or there, you will be making memories. It's a, it's supposed to be a pleasant memory. It's not, it's not some trauma memory. It's a treasured memory. And maybe you're actually remembering how clever you were at some point in your life and getting out of a situation. Um, maybe you're remembering the right key. It reminds me of that game of memory where you flip over the cards and you're trying to make, um, you're trying to make pairs and there's something like, maybe you're trying to remember where something was or what, what was the trick? What was the key? in a situation like this that you've been in before? What was the trick? What was, what was the matching? What was the match? What was the, how did you get out of a past situation? Or how did you deal with a similar situation in the past? Okay, we got a floor card, which I love. Um, white rose new start and wisdom and last time we got the daffodils another new start white rose knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom so knowing who you are knowing what you're capable of i think in a way remembering who you are remembering what you've been capable of in the past is going to help you in a current in a current situation um, that wisdom of knowing yourself remembering who you are remembering maybe there's even like a key piece of wisdom uh, maybe you wrote it down. Maybe it's on a sticky note. Maybe it's, there's a key piece of wisdom that's going to help in a new situation. So it's, it's a little bit about what we talked about last week. That part correlates. It's almost like we've got a chain of, of information coming in here. And this one, Cora, we're definitely touching on a chain, on a link that we had from last week where we've learned something. So there's a new situation, but we've actually learned from the old situation quite a bit. So we're bringing that memory and that wisdom, that, that hard earned wisdom that we've learned into a new situation. We're recognizing this is a new situation, but we're also recognizing I have actually seen something similar and do have some wisdom here. So, and just striking that balance between like pa the wisdom from past experience, which we don't want to discard and applying it to a new experience while also acknowledging that this is a totally new thing. So a new start and wisdom. And I just love this knowing yourself because that's what I'm sort of getting from this keys on trees, knowing what you're capable of. Remembering what you're capable of. And then we have Venice Mallow. Something very Italian here. Delicate fleeting beauty. When life is not coming up roses, although it kind of is a little bit, um, look to the weeds to find the beauty hidden within them. Mm. Yeah. When life is not coming up roses, so we can remember roses though. <laughs> when life is not coming up roses, um, look to the weeds and find the beauty hidden within them. So delicate fleeting beauty. I don't know. Sometimes these quotes don't really match the other thing, but uh, the Victorian meaning of the Venice Mallow was delicate fleeting beauty. 
But this quote is really interesting because it definitely looks like this card finding some sort of hidden treasure, hidden beauty. Yeah, hidden treasure, I would say. And enjoying some sort of moment. It's delicate, it's fleeting, it's a moment. And maybe this treasured memory has to do with a delicate fleeting moment. From your past. Okay, the last of the Oracle cards, work your light. All right, we got a little, we got a little pamphlet here. Mm. Okay, Anna, grandmother of Jesus, the groundwork's been laid for something. So there's already quite a bit covered. So you maybe have already tried at least half of these keys. Like there's some groundwork already laid here, um, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. So, um, and maybe you are laying the groundwork for something, the precursor to the precursor. So so we're, we're on the path. I also want to say that like, um, every, every, uh, person born with ovaries is born with all the ovaries they will ever have. So, and you are made up from one ovary and one sperm, right? So you, that half of you was inside your grandmother before your, your mother was born. And I always think that's really cool and really interesting, but it also can speak to generational trauma and um, having experienced, you know, the hormone shifts and the emotional shifts within your grandmother while they were pregnant with your mother. And that sort of generational passing down, and if it's trauma, it can also be good, wonderful things. So, and you also might be remembering a grandparent too. This could be very much about a grandparent, a treasured memory that you have with a grandparent and not letting that go, clinging to that, holding on to that. Um, and so, yeah, also there's some sort of divine plan at foot here. Um, at, um, and then also the groundwork and you're, you're sort of elevated from that as the elephant, the elevated elephant here, but you're getting a good view of the ground and the ground. Yeah. It's like, it's like, maybe you are up in your head about something, but it's all gonna, you're going to get out of your head and you are going to be boots on the ground at some point. And you're going to have this really great understanding of the lay of the land and where you are. So that's what this is all reminding me. Anna, grandmother of Jesus. And it's just sort of like laying the groundwork, getting the blueprints, um, walking the property that you're going to build on, that kind of thing. And, and really trying to see the house you're going to build or see what you're going to create there. Um, and so just you are laying groundwork right now for something in the future. Um, warrior woman, have you answered your deepest calling? So this is going to be, um, and I, I hate the deepest because in my mind it creates this like competition was like, is that my deepest calling? What's this mean by deepest? Is it the, just the deeper calling? Is it a deep calling? Is it just a calling? So I, let's just simplify that for people that love to overthink or can't help themselves <laughs> with the overthinking. And just like, there is a calling, there's a request uh, from the universe that you participate in something or that you do something, uh, that you take a journey somewhere and um, you're really asking yourself, you're hearing it is basically what I want to say. There's also a sense of communication and strength and power here. Um, and this groundwork could have to do to some sort of calling that you are starting to hear, starting to see some sort of purpose, some sort of calling one of many perhaps callings in your life. Um, and you're starting to see that um, purpose and starting to understand it is what I'm seeing here. Mintakan, longing for home, belonging the original light workers. So this could, I mean, be about a home, building a home, creating a home of some kind or something about the home, moving into a home. Um, and then we have keys too. So keys to a home um, seems kind of interesting there. Uh, so longing for home, a place where you belong. Um, and maybe you are being called to a place where you belong. There might be a lot of groundwork to be laid, a lot of work to be done before you get there. 
Um, and maybe, maybe you're laying groundwork and there will be an interruption and then you'll come back to the work. Um, but there's a sense of wanting to find your place in the world. Um, and you know, I guess it does feel a little bigger. I want to keep making this like a very practical thing, but this part with the Mintonka in, in here, starts to feel a little bit bigger. Um, but longing to have your place and, and have you found your place in this world? But perhaps the journey so far, at least in one aspect of your life, it has been laying groundwork for you to be able to see and recognize your place in this world and where you belong. Um, we're all here, so we all belong here. Uh, and um, But sometimes we can have that sensation and sometimes we do not have that sensation of belonging here. And a card like this reminds me of a sense of like feeling like you don't belong, feeling like, um, because that's what creates the longing to belong, obviously. Um, we don't long for things we already have, typically. And, um, and a sense of not belonging. So I think there's a feeling of realizing that you do belong and what it is that you contribute to a certain situation. And it doesn't have to be a tangible, definable thing, like with words and a label and um, you can find it on the tax form of what it is that you do. And it's not necessarily something like that. But it is a sense of I am contributing it um, to this place where I find myself or, and I belong there. Yeah. The age of light, you've been training for this for lifetime. So there's something that you are definitely ready. And that's uh, with the keys too. I'm seeing that perhaps you, you are ready for something. Um, you are, have laid the groundwork. You are ready to go. You are ready for something here and perhaps for this calling, perhaps for this to unfold, um, for, perhaps for this sense of belonging, perhaps for this home, you're ready for something. Um, and so it looks to me like maybe you have tried a lot of the keys. So you've laid a lot of the groundwork. You've tried a lot of keys, a lot of different things. Um, and you're getting much closer to where it is that you need to be right now. I mean, you're always right where you need to be, but you're maybe getting closer to feeling like you're right where you need to be. So you've been training for this for a lifetime. So whatever this is, this like your deepest calling or answering some sort of phone call or some sort of request, um, or uh, you, you're ready for this. You have laid the groundwork. You're ready for something. Um, and I think this treasured memory could be like, just remember what it is you've learned already. Remember where you've been. Remember who you are also. And it might just be like an experience with this Venice Mallow in the mix. It might be a limited experience and not like a career in all caps, but like an experience, a, a specific thing happening um, that isn't permanent and is, is fleeting, but is definitely part of who you are and what you're meant to be doing here. All right, one more shuffle of the Muse Tarot. I just... Heading into spring, I couldn't use any of my dark decks. I had to go bright spring deck. Sure, we'll see what the message is though. All right, so a reversal from the bottom of the deck. My deck is upright and here we have the bottom. Oof. Six of inspiration. I so wish this was right, upright. I really wish it was upright, <laughs> but it's not. So this is something that maybe you have experienced. So this reading, sort of the background of the reading can be a sense of embarrassment, something you've been embarrassed about, something you've had shame about, something you haven't had a victory in, something you haven't succeeded at. Um, and... Yeah, it could be just a sense of failure <laughs> around something. This is, we're going to be talking about something that you have yet to succeed at, right? With the key zone trees, there's a process here. We have to eliminate a bunch of things. So we haven't succeeded in like finding our deepest calling or feeling like we belong in a certain situation or maybe you're every aspect of your life, but hopefully not. Um, so it's a, it's a, we're talking about the background here. The background vibe is something that hasn't been successful yet. 
hasn't been successful yet. Um, or also, and also is very private, a private disappointment, a private failure. Um, you know, and don't let anyone else define what failure and success mean to you. The, I think the foundation of true success is first figuring out what it means to you because our culture, and I think every culture has these sort of markers of success, what success means. And our culture has things like titles and, um, and money. And I know we all know this, there's these external markers and like what age you are when you get married and having kids and all of these ideas about success and what it means and these visible markers to everybody else. But I think a true foundation of success is knowing what it means to you. What are you going to feel successful for? Are you going to feel successful? Do you want to be a manager? Do you want to be a middle manager? Did, is that what you want? Externally, everyone's going to clap and come to your little um, promotion party. And it's great if that is something you want, but is it something you want? Or is it something totally different? And that's not, that wouldn't feel like true success to you because that's not actually what you want. What you want is to direct music videos and this isn't it. But the process to directing music videos is challenging. It's unknown. There's not a known direct path there. You can't just follow the known path in front of you and hop from you know, ancient rock and well-established rock to well-established rock on your way there. It's a very unknown, high-risk journey. Um, so, yeah. So maybe that's what success is to you. Or maybe it's just being happy with what you have. Maybe that can be a marker of success. Um, so making sure you're defining success and that, and then living up to what you want or achieving what you want, not necessarily the external markers. Past present. Okay. Now I have the deck upside down, right? Right. Please tell me I have the deck upside down. If I don't, I'm going to pause this. So past, present, inner landscape, what's at issue, environment, to-do list, possible outcome. Let's go. Okay. In the recent past, we have seven of materials. Yeah. Uh, you've been very patient. Like this is what I mean. Like this isn't necessarily failure. This is just not yet success because this looks like we haven't succeeded. We're, we've been putting in the work one step in front of the other, just going and going and going and not really looking up, looking around, uh, knowing that our measures of success are not, um, are not uh, visible right now. So there's a sense of having just done a lot of work for something and uh, continuing on that path and not necessarily well stop it there is a bit of like stopping for a moment to assess where you are um and realizing that you're not where you want to be which doesn't mean you get off the path necessarily sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't um you're just not where you want to be yet. And is this worth it? Should you keep going? Should you keep putting work into this, even though it's not yielding what, what you thought it would yield on the timeline you thought it would yield it, right? Because this seven of materials is all about like a farmer planted some stuff. And now the farmer is like, are these seeds coming up? Did I get a bunch of bum seeds? What's going on here? How come I don't have anything to show for my labor? And there's been plenty of labor put in here. So should I even be a farmer? Um, there is a sense here, this one, this card in particular from this deck is more about like just moving forward, continuing to do the work, whether you've gotten to your destination or not, but there's, you're still going. And so there's a patiently impatient vibe to it usually. Um, and, uh, kind of just continuing to do the work, even though you're not really seeing the results you wanted on the timeline that you were hopeful for. So uh, in the current situation, we have the Hierophant. This can be a teacher. This can be um, uh, like an uh, organizational leader. There's, um, it seems like you might be asking questions of this person. Um, you might have asked this person for things. In general, this Hierophant seems to be just a reflection of you. 
um, right here is what I'm, what the vibe I'm seeing is a reflection of you. But the pinnacle of success or someone who appears to reach the pinnacle of success here and is in a leadership in an organization, sometimes it's more of a charitable organization or a spiritual organization, but this leader actually doesn't, I mean, leaders do often know more than us, especially about the landscape, about what's going on around, um, but there's a sense that this one isn't, this one is just a person that People come to you for advice, but they don't. Is this, I'm not even sure this person is really passionate about where they're at, about the pinnacle of success um, that they appear to have reached. But there is like a truth here and a clarity of understanding, right? Oh, I think there's a saying like, when you go to the mountaintop to talk to the guru, it's just a guy sitting on the mountaintop. Like, it's, it's just somebody there. It's just all I'm seeing is this leader is just a person. And um, they, they might feel a little vulnerable or might be in a vulnerable position. Um, they're in a possibly, well, it's both a protected position and a vulnerable position. It's kind of both at the same time. But you're not the only, the only person coming here for these sorts of answers. Um, and the Hierophant to me can also represent like just an entire organization and the rules and regulations of that organization and how you move ahead in that organization. Like, it's a, it can sometimes feel like a traditional corporate job or something like going from, from the, not to diss on those, those are great for a lot of people, but um, going from like well-established um, labeled role to well-established labeled role, you know, the sort of hopping forward on these like ancient stones and going forward on a well-established path. So that's what we have here is sort of a established path. Um, and all I see here is someone who's gone down that path before you. Uh, they're not um, necessarily the end all be all or a guru, really. They're just someone that went down the path for you, which is pretty much um, what gurus are, is people that are a little further down the path. Like we were already talking about that chain here. And so we're talking about that with wisdom and knowledge being passed down. Um, yeah, it could be an organization, a large organization, a unique organization. Maybe you've been putting in a bunch of work for this organization or your path has brought you to a certain place with this organization and it's just not all that. It, to me, this Hierophant has a sense of hollowness um, of just having followed the rules and not really gotten where you wanted to go. In your hopes, your fears, your inner landscape, you have Ace of Materials, Ace of Pentacles. You're hoping for an actual opportunity. Um, yeah, uh, you're looking at a real opportunity. You're wanting a real opportunity. Um, something that actually comes in, maybe a new job, maybe a new, a new position, a new career, perhaps. Like a new, um, you're looking to start something new, a new business, a new job basically something like that is what you're hoping for is that uh to really plant an actual seed where something's actually going to grow with the seven of materials we have you sort of like planting seeds and like they're coming up but are they going to fruit are they going to what's going to happen and this is like i want something to have some legs and some roots and really grow here what's at issue is this um, moon reversed there's a lot you don't know so yeah, the moon reverse is just like, there, there could be things being kept from you, things that you don't know because people don't want you to know them. I mean, that sounds so suspicious and so um, cynical really, but it, it can be like, there's just, there's information here that you don't know. There's something that's hidden from you. There could be just a lot of subconscious issues going on as well. Like, 
Um, other people could be dealing with some subconscious issues. Uh, there could be, I would say this, this, this comes under the category more of illusion. Like our moon can balance between illusion and intuition, what we can know, what we can't know. Here we have a lot of what we can't know. And the moon in reverse to me is going to just tilt our little, we have the full moon and the new moon. And so this almost seems like the new moon. And there's just a lot of unknown. There's a lot in darkness. And so, and the moon upright can be like, yeah, more leaning towards intuition and a little bit more understanding. But the moon in reverse can be more like, oh, there's less understanding here. There's a lot more that could be known. We're sort of in the dark. There's a lot that can't be controlled. There's a lot that can't be known. There's a lot that is um, in this whole sort of murky area of the moon and moon shadows and dark moons and all of that. Um, there's just, it, this falls more in the dark unknown, um, subconscious issues that aren't being made conscious and, and brought to light. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. So that's what's at issue, which is pretty much what's always at issue anyway here on this planet is just a lot of things that we just can't know and aren't knowable right now. And I think we got that also last week. So and a lot of unknowns here. Um, and I think maybe a lot of unfounded suspicions, a lot of um, unknowables. Um, and so then in your environment, though, we have awakening. So last time, we had the moon in the environment and we're talking about, you know, that sort of weird place of is the tide going in? Is the tide coming out? Is this, you know, the water's brackish. It's not quite fresh. It's not quite salt. Um, it's an estuary. There's estuary vibes here with this moon um, of just the water coming in and going out. And it's not quite the bay and it's not quite the river but it's sometimes a little bit of both and the sort of that um that area that's um poorly defined poorly defined is what the moon in reverse looks like so awakening there is truth there are realizations there are understandings there's judgment decisions i think we got this a couple of weeks ago here not to keep referencing the past but um there are there's clarity. Clarity is in the environment. It does exist here. Um, people are seeing things. People are making decisions. Um, there is a lot of clarity coming in here. I think um, there's this strong decision-making vibe. Decisions are being made. Decisions have been made. Um, and it always reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from um, The Last Kingdom. is decisions were made and consequences followed. And that's just life decisions. We have to make decisions with what information we have, with what we do know, we have to make decisions based on our intuition, based on actual information, based on sort of the collection of all of those things. So there's a strong in the environment, somebody else is making a lot of decisions, somebody else has seen someone else has decided somebody else has made choices and decisions. So these are happening right now. Uh, the grades are coming back. The, um, the review is done and, and is over and people have made decisions. So, um, you may not be aware of those decisions at this point. Uh, but, um, somebody knows what they're talking about. Maybe there's this general vibe of like, oh, nobody knows what they're talking about, but somebody has n knows what they're talking about. Like, um, so the fruits have, come in and someone's actually eating the fruits of their labors there you you might have been planting a lot and this person actually there's somebody here that does know it could be the hierophant it could be the teacher or the guide you have that does know something so not everybody's in the dark here um somebody somebody sees very clearly and has made a decision uh your to-do list ace of voices um understand clarity of thought, being very clear uh, with yourself, with your words, with decisions that you are making. Um, an epiphany comes in, a realization, it could be that key, the key that you've been looking for could be coming in here. 
um, and opening your mind, right? Because this is so elevated, this could be the mind. Um, that key to opening your mind is coming in. It's here. Um, communicating very clearly. Again, this is also a communication card with the sword there. So Ace of Voices, communicate very clearly, be very direct, right? We have our white owl here, our, the BFF of Empress Rose readings. Um, the white owl, very direct and clear. So your job is to be very direct, very clear, um, <clears throat> with some sort of course of knowing of information, um, understanding, and clear words. You need to be very clear. Um, about something there's a decisiveness here yeah being very decisive being very clear and very direct do not mince words and i think that this awakening that's in your environment is coming into your mind like somebody knows something you're going to receive that information and your job is now to be very clear Listen, I'm talking about communication. My voice just suddenly did that, <clears throat> did that thing. Okay. And then we have the Empress here. This is your possible outcome. Abundant, uh, being able to create this new world. You're right. You want to, you want to put this seed down. This looks like, like a map marker. You want to put this map marker down. You want to mark this territory. You want to make your mark. You want to plant this seed and have it grow and the empress is the fertile soil it's the earth it's this fertile soil that you are planting your seed in and it is going to grow there is going to be a harvest you got to communicate very clearly you've got to know yourself i think that's what this is this is this beginning of all wisdom is knowing yourself this is wisdom and you're seeking wisdom outside yourself here right? This is the wisdom outside yourself. It's ancient. It's been amassed through the ages. There is wisdom outside yourself. But like I said, I had this sort of disheartened feel about that. Like this wisdom is outside yourself. This is the wisdom within yourself, that wisdom. And it's coming into you. So um, it, there is wisdom within that you have and you need to voice it and be very clear. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Yeah. This is it. knowing yourself. This is finding that key knowing the key, knowing who you are, knowing something, um, and answering that deepest calling as clearly, as clearly as possible. It's just, I'm hearing like a bell just kind of ringing out very clearly. Um, it's just such a clear sound. It's piercing the silence. It's going through everything. It's getting to the core of an issue. It's a clear understanding and a knowing and I think you need to stick with that knowing you're not like everybody else I mean yeah you're unique you're not like everybody else so what's going to work for all these other people may not work for you what it would be the general advice for most people may not be what the advice is for you and what's going to work for you that's why generally I hate advice I know sometimes I have it out here but gen we are all here on very unique journeys learning very unique lessons that have to do with who we were when we came here, who we are inherently, how we grew up, how we were raised, our nature, nurture, the nature of us, the nurturing of us. And then through all of that, like difficulty, we find our unique path. We find our key forward. And then what happens and people are like, ah, oh, yes, this is the key. Um, this is the key for everybody without recognizing the uniqueness of all of our personalities and um, upbringings and backgrounds and it's all very unique so maybe you did need to learn to forgive and be kinder and maybe somebody else needs to learn to have better boundaries so your advice is going to be very toxic for someone who is actually in a different place um, and tr and actually needs to learn very different things so advice is not one size fits all and that's with the key and and with your uniqueness and kind of wanting to belong and maybe you do wish that your key looked like everybody else's key but it's not going to and it's going to open your mind to something there's something where your mind is opening up you're seeing something very clearly and i think your job is also going to be to communicate about that the empress here but you are abundant you are the beginning you are the beginning of universes this farm begins with you. 
right? And laying the groundwork again, like laying the groundwork, planting the seed, abundant harvest. Um, and maybe it's a harvest you've been working towards for a very long time and hadn't, hasn't come in yet, but there is abundance in your future. So, all right. Um, let's see here. Messages on my phone. We're going to get this card right here. Otter spirit, you are never alone. You are very well loved through this process. There are friends, there is support, even though it might not be exactly the support you want, but you're not going to be go through something alone. There are, there's support, there's love, there's care, there's consideration for you. You are part of a community and it may just be a community of two and it may just be a theoretical community in your head. This longing to belong, you do belong. Maybe not exactly where you are, but you do belong here. And then we're going to grab a feather. I'm actually going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. Uh, I don't like it when they stick out because then I feel like I'm cheating. So. All right. Woodpecker. Use your discernment and fortitude. Discernment and fortitude to achieve your goals and find a new rhythm. Again, a new start, a new rhythm. Use your discernment and fortitude, right? This wisdom too is like we've been, we've, we do have some experience to go on here. We can learn from our unique wisdom that we've gained through our experiences and apply that to a new situation. It's not the same situation, but it is a newer situation. And we're going to use that wisdom from the old one and we're going to bring it forward recognizing the uniqueness of the new situation, but also recognizing that we have some wisdom. So finding a new rhythm, uh, keep going, use your discernment, right? Keep going. Cause we've already been, we've been working towards something for quite some time here. So keep going. Um, but there is a new key, a new understanding that is coming in, um, and go with that. Okay. Hopefully this was helpful for you. It was. All right. See you guys next time. Bye.